You are listening to the Jam Fry Show all about movies, and my guest today is up-and-coming actor David Cade. Welcome to the show, David. Hi, Jan. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. Uh, let's talk. I, I loved Lansky. We're going to talk about Lansky, but we're going to talk about a lot of things. Um, I, I actually, this movie was one of the better movies I've seen so far this year, to be honest. I thought it was really well done, riveting, very interesting, great cast. And you're one of the cast, obviously. And um, so let's talk a little bit about that. You play um, Bugsy Siegel. So talk about how you what kind of research you did to play him and and how did you come to this role so um i originally got the script i think in uh december of 2018 or, or something like that and I, I got a chance to read it very early on in the development process um and i started bothering the director every <laughs> immediately <laughs> I, you know i was sending auditions and i was uh i offered to fly out to new york to meet with him i um, it was really persistent, and um, and it was a probably about a year and a half process um, of actually being the guy who got the role because um, they were going through you know they were sorting the rest of the cast and there was a whole bunch of things to figure out and you're just you're gunning for it so you don't necessarily know how the chips are going to land until they finally did so um, and uh, in terms of the research you know there's a um, a plethora of research out there about him. Um, I think with Ben, the thing is really discerning uh, fact from fiction and really myth, mm -hmm. right? Because he's sort of a mythical character in many ways. Um, so I wanted to look at, you know, A, how it even portrayed in the past. B, you know, historically who he really was and what that meant for the time period and how somebody like him could come into... Uh, power the way that he did and um and uh, and then slowly building out you know what i wanted to bring that was really authentic about ben to the role i didn't want to make him a caricature well i also i when i looked at the looked at you playing this role i thought he's too handsome to play uh <laughs> ben siegel but then i thought well you know warren Beatty played him <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. know, over 30 years ago. So I thought, well, Warren Beatty is one of the more handsome men from Hollywood. So I right. guess Bugsy Siegel was a handsome man. Yeah, well, you know, look, he, he was considered handsome in his day. Uh, you know, um, he, you know, it's funny that I read one thing in particular, which is that when he lived in California, every day he would wake up and he would work out at the YMCA, get a tan, have his coffee. You know, he really, he really did take care of himself. But I also thought it was really important to juxtapose that um, that natural charisma that Ben has with some brutality, right? And I think that was what I was really able to bring to the role uniquely, or at least that was my attempt, was to go like, okay, he is um, charismatic and the, the ladies do like him as was written in the script. Yes. But he's somebody who could pick a woman off the ground and, and as a gentleman, bring her back to her car and then walk back and execute her husband. And not wow. twice a day, right? So yeah. that's cold. That's a really cold, that's a really cold thing to do. And um, you don't have to constrain that into handsome or unhandsome. You know, people are brutal or they're not. And so that was trying to, that was trying to make that sort of my statement about Ben. Well, you humanize them. I mean, you know, in a way, you, you, you're right. You didn't do a caricature of him you you know you brought a reality and you know all of us are layered you know and as an actor that's one of the jobs that's really very important for you as an actor to bring those layers into play that you're not showing him just and, and we've all seen performances where it's just over the top and you know there's no shading in it and that's like it's that's the artistry of, of uh, artistry of acting is that you can bring those layers it's a painting you're painting a character that you're creating and you're putting all those different colors into the mix and that's what you've done with this i mean i the last scene that you have with uh john magaro yeah uh, that scene brought tears to my eyes actually really yeah oh that's nice yeah. well you want to know a fun fact about that scene Yes, definitely. That, that very last scene, I'm, I improvised that last scene. You did? Yeah. 
what part of it? The whole thing? The, uh, up that last monologue that he has in the cut, um, where he says, uh, I'm, go I'm going off the cuff, but he basically says, you know, you know, Meyer looked up to you my whole life. What was I going to do? Be a tailor son for eight bucks a week, right? You, you could have been anything. And I loved you for that, right? And just that whole thing was, um, I learned a lesson in this, in that that's where research can bring something to the role. I think it's very possible for actors to dive into research or backstory in such a way where it's actually prohibitive to just doing the job. It's possible, right? You can get so in your head about research. But um, in this particular take, I had a really strong instinct on it. And we had done the scene as written a couple times. And I finally went to Aton. I said, Aton, I think I got, I have an instinct on this one. I was like, let me just take this for a swing and, and see what we get. And he was like, all right, okay, let's try it out. So I took, I took that swing and that's the scene that we got. And it made the final cut, which is kind of crazy. But, yeah. um, but, it, but I felt that was the emotional necessity that we needed in that moment. And it was the, tr it was the authentic thing to say. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and that's how I wanted Bugsy to really be seen. I wanted him not to be seen as a brute or this charming guy who you know, gets everything in his way all the time. I wanted to actually kind of make him a tragedy, like reverse that at, at the end where it's like, no, actually, Meyer, I, I did this for you. You know, I, I thought that was an interesting idea. It, it, it really was, and it worked really well. And, and one of the things, don't you say something about character? You say what? something about having character or, you know, it was, it was like giving, I said, like, I what said, you've given up for your life. I said, I said, uh, uh, I said something about my soul. Your soul. I said, I, I said uh, and I've given you my, I said, uh, but I don't know if it was worth my soul. Right. Because I don't know how to get that back. And that's sort of an acknowledgement on the murderous things that he did. And I, I think that a lot of men who commit murder like that don't think they're going to heaven. You know, and they know it. And so it's really a measure of was it worth the investment? Uh, and I thought that was a very interesting concept for me. Yeah, and it, in that yeah, that line really was the one who was like, wow. And then, you know, we know what happens in the next scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. uh, So what was it, uh, you you didn't have any scenes with Harvey Cartel at all, unfortunately, right? Unfortunately. Uh, did you even see him on the, you were just filming different sets and different places? So he, he was in week one and one and two, and I showed up immediately after him. I got to hang with Sam a little bit, uh, but I missed Harvey. Unfortunately. Yeah. 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 Sam's really good. Sam Worthington. We're talking about yeah. Sam Worthington. Uh, this is based on some, on, on just a, a true, the facts, at least the, the, the story is based on true facts. We don't know exactly everything that took place, but um, Sam, we're, just so, so people know, what, what are, why don't you tell our audience what Lansky's all about? Here we are talking about it, but nobody really knows exactly so, so what this Lansky, film is about. What, Lans what Lansky's about is um, a down and out writer who has had some success previously, who is contacted by Meyer Lansky to come out and tell this aging gangster's story, given the opportunity to write his story. Um, but the agreement is that he can't print anything before he dies. And so Meyer uh, begins sharing his innermost secrets with this writer who has his own struggles at that time. He's in the midst of a divorce and, and is, is trying to figure out his own life. Um, However, the catch is that Meyer was reputed to have an $800 million fortune from his gambling operations in Cuba. And so as he's telling his story, the FBI catches wind of the fact that Meyer may be releasing very pertinent information to, the, to not only you know, incriminate him, but to also collect this money that's been sitting in the ether for forever. So the film kind of combines these elements and it's in, it's, a, it's in some ways a real story, a true story, in that Aton Rockaway's father um, was the writer and went and met with Meyer Lansky and, and did this story. I think, I think his father was a, a journalist with a, speci a specific interest in Jewish mobsters or something of the like. And, and so that's, that's where the basis of the story comes from. 
Fascinating. And I love all the layers. So your part of the film is the um, when Harvey Keitel is telling his story yes. that we flash back to yes. what happened when, when they were younger. So. Yes, half the film is present day, 1980s Miami, and the other half is the 1920s, 30s, and 40s as you watch Myers rise um, as a criminal empire. Yeah. It's, it's, it really is. I just, um, as I said, I, it just, I was riveted by it. I was like, you know, it just some movies, I watch a lot of movies, obviously, mm -hmm. and what I do. And some movies, you kind of go, oh, well, I can't wait for this one to be over um, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but sure. it has to grab me anymore. It, it just has to grab me. But this, I was just so fascinated by the story. Um, I actually had dinner with Harvey, Ke Harvey Keitel years ago with his then wife, Lorraine Bracco. So that's a long oh, time wow. ago. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I well, I studied acting and film in New York a million years ago, <laughs> probably before you were born. I, you're but, in the tribe. Sorry? You're in the tribe. Yeah. You're amongst <laughs> us, yeah. I am, that's why I understand yeah. acting a little bit, and that's why I love talking to actors and uh, filmmakers in general. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this, it, it was just, it was just riveting. I, I, the whole way it was put together, um, I thought it was very, very well done. And I, and I do recommend for everybody, I know it's out there on, VOD right now, um, and pretty much all the platforms, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I believe so. I don't think it's been released on Amazon yet, but I think it's coming shortly. And it's on iTunes, and it's on, yeah, it's a lot of different places you can get it. Yeah, I think I saw it last on Netflix, actually. I was on Netflix? Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah. yeah, when I was looking for other things, Landscape Point uh, came up. So I was happy to see that there. Yeah, right. what, what, what for you, was there anything in the filming of this movie that stood out? Did you have some funny, interesting story about the filming of it or something dramatic happened or some shift or change that took place during the filming of it? You know, it was a, it was interesting. This was in some ways, one of the most high pressure and laid back sets I've ever been on. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, it's independent film. The budgets are tight. Uh, the time frames are tight. You know, we don't have all the money to go and spend on as much as ludicrously as we want on each day and, and, and whatever. And, and you got to make your days. So in that regard, there was a there was a bit of a pressure vacuum where it's like we knew we had to hit what we had to hit. We were sometimes undersupplied and 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 we had to make it work. Um, on the other hand, you know, it was a pretty laid back set. There's a lot of real great. There's there, there was a lot of professionals on this one. You know the actors were were, were professional. The um, um, the crew is great, uh, and Aton, you know, is is a really spirited and nuanced director. He's 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 I think he's going to do really good things. Yes. So it was, there was a good leadership, and I I think uh, I guess if I have a story, it was probably just when I first got there and I met Sam, who was coming off the set, and um, and he was great. <laughs> he came up to me and he said. And he said, uh, he said, hey man, he's like, it's so nice to meet you. And he's an all sea relation. He's like, so nice to meet you, baby. And he, uh, and, uh, and he goes, I watched your work. And I went, really? <laughs> I was like, you did? He was like, yeah. He's like, mate, you're really good. I'm so excited for you to have this box. It's going to be so great. And I'm like, thanks, man. I was like, I'm so jazzed up. And then he made this comment and he said, and he was, I think he was talking to me and John. And he said, I know these young bucks basically are going to come in and kill it because I know what I was like when I was their age, you know, and, and, you know, you guys are monsters. So he really kind of gave us a send off and um, it was cool. It was nice. Yeah. That, that is nice. That's very nice when you get that from uh, one of your uh, fellow peers. That's yeah. Lovely. That's good. John Magaro is in, he's in a lot right now. Um, yeah. And yeah, he's, 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 again, another up and coming actor. What was it like? Because most of your scenes were with him directly. So what was yeah. that like working with him? I love John. Um, there's not a bad thing you can say about John. Um, he's, a, um, he's a great actor. He's a nuanced actor. He's a very, uh, he's, he, he's an interesting person. He's a gentle person, but a, but a, but a strong person. And I, and I just, I really vibe with him. He was a really great Lansky. Mm -hmm. um, and he's a good dance partner for for what we have to do out there. That's what I was uh, going to ask you because it's so much playing off the other actor that you're with. And if you don't have somebody that you can really play with, then it becomes more difficult totally. to do your role. So th what was that dance like between the two of you? It came off well on the screen, but um, 
but what was it like when you were actually filming it? It was interesting. I had to, um, I really had to figure out, part of figuring out who Bugsy was, was figuring out who Meyer was. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to work on your character and develop all of those things in a box. And then when you step on a, on a set or a stage and you have somebody who you really have to interface with, you go, oh, we're going to have to adjust some of this, right? Because that's just the nature of it. So I think that um, when I first met with John and saw his portrayal of Meyer and where he was, it informed me in a better way of who Ben had been his whole life and, and realizing their dynamic through John and I's dynamic and trying to make what we happened here into something that would translate on the screen. So, you know, I think um, always trying to, I guess just constantly recalibrate off the other actor. It's, it's, not, it's not an easy thing, but I learned a lot about who Ben was through John, um, which is nice. You mentioned that you had improvised that last scene. Did you have other scenes that you also improvised? I had, um, well, I can remember one thing. I don't remember if I, if I improvised other dialogue scenes, but I would improvise actions that Bugsy would do. And I put them into, so for instance, there's a scene where I shoot um, Rosen's, Rosencrantz, Rosen's, he's one of our dealers. And, uh, and uh, it was a very subtle thing, but I shot him once. And then when he hits the ground, I hit him again. I double tap him basically, right? And it was little things like that. That's just a brutal way. It's an efficient and brutal way to end somebody. Mm -hmm. And that movement in and of itself speaks to who Ben was. It's not personal, but boy, is it effective and cold, you know? And I, I tried to find those. And I would, I would do other things, you know? Just, there's nothing, just one didn't quite make the take. There was a scene earlier when I was eating and I made Ben eat in the way that I think that he lived, which was ag aggressive. <laughs> you know, this, when he, like, he's eating olives off the mark. He's eating olives off the martini and he's having a great, great time. You have this? It's great. You know, I, I wanted to make him eat big and kill, and kill cold, you know, and, and, and always juxtaposing these flavors of his life, you know. Uh, um, so, yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. Well, it's a great performance. Uh, again, I recommend everybody go find Lansky. And uh, it, it's a very, you know, you'll, it, it's a very interesting, riveting movie, as I said. And you've got some other great movies, I mean, uh, new movies coming out. Um, and you're with yeah. your, and, and they star Michael Shannon, who yeah. is absolutely amazing himself. So let's talk about those two movies. And, and, and why were you in two movies with Michael Shannon. Mike? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's luck of the draw. Really? Yeah. So let's talk about Swing first, and then we'll talk about Shriver. So tell sure. us a little bit what Swing is all about. So Swing is an American sports drama centered around um, rowing, collegiate rowing. And um, it's, uh, Michael Shannon plays the coach of this college rowing team and basically, you know, getting them back together as a team to go and win. And um, it's great. I, first off, if you ever told me that I would play uh, a 20 year old again in a boat, it'd have blown my mind. I would have said no way, but, uh, but I pulled it off. And um, you mean you're not 20? No, I'm not 20. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Um, but it was, uh, it was a really great experience. I actually loved making that movie. We had a lot of fun. Um, and it's the footage that I've seen from it is phenomenal. Um, Mike's great. I'm, I, uh, I'm a big fan of his and, uh, and not just as an actor, but as a person, he's, a he's always been really great to me. So I, I like him a lot. And, um, yeah, I, that, that movie, um, I, I kind of was one of the great surprises of my career, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Where did you film that one? We were in, uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana for like six weeks. We actually had a whole rowing camp um, prior to the film. So we did about seven days in the boat, morning wow. and night. So you really, 
Yeah, you had to really get out there. Yeah, yeah, really work on your stroke on that one. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's the thing. You know, every actor always. You know, do you know how to ride horses? Of course, I know how to ride horses. You know, do you know how to, do you know how to do collegiate rowing? Yes, I've canoed. I have canoed. I've kai. Of course, I know how to do collegiate rowing. I, I don't know how to do collegiate rowing. Those guys <laughs> monsters. They are. Mo it's actually really funny. There was a a point where because we had the actors in the boat who had learned our passable version of collegiate rowing, okay? And then we actually had like a hundred rowers fly out, like actual guys. And they're giants. They are giant people. They are strong. They look like linebackers. And, and, and they, the way they make that boat move is out of this world. So I had no idea. This was uh, beyond me, but we had a great coach um, out there named Linda Murray, who is a, a fantastic coach and athlete herself. And we had a lot of support to really kind of pull it off. Wonderful, I can't wait to see that one. Do you know when that one's coming out? When's I don't, I've heard, I've heard it may be coming at the end of the summer though. So I'm, I'm not, I'm end of the year for sure, but I think it's, I think they're tilting it towards the end of summer. Okay. It might be a good movie for the end of the summer for sure. I oh, think, I think it's great, yeah, it's good timing. Yeah. Yeah, good timing for that one. Let's talk about Shriver then with Michael Shannon again. Yeah. And what that's, that's, what's that about? So that's another star-studded cast. That's an exciting cast. It's Mike and uh, Kate Hudson, um, Jimmy Simpson, uh, 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 Zach Braff, Don um, Johnson. It, it's a hell of a cast. Wow. Um, I'm stammering because I have to remember all the names. It's like memorizing a monologue. Um, and uh, that's a great film. So that's a, it's a comedy. Um, it's about a, uh, a college campus that hosts a literary convention every year to assemble the greatest minds in, in the writer's sphere. And this woman believes that she's found um, the long lost Shriver, who is essentially the J.D. Salinger of his time. And so she sends out this invite to Shriver, but Shriver is actually um, uh, a drunk at a bar somewhere in Philly, like it's the wrong guy. And he decides to take him up on the invitation. He goes out there and he has to pose as this great literary genius who everybody looks up to and who wrote the great novel of the American 21st century and then disappeared. Um, and there's a twist to the end of it. I won't ruin it for anybody, but it's, it's, uh, it's a fun movie and a lot of talent on it. It sounds like it's gonna be a fun movie. Do you know when this one's coming out? I think that's probably that's probably later in the year. I would say it's probably you know late fall or you know latest um, spring of next year. I, we've we've got a lot of that in the can. We got COVID slowed us down on that one, mm -hmm. but we finished our last week. Uh, I think about three months ago. So I I'd imagine they have a pretty close cut on it at this point. And what part do you play in that movie? So I play uh, Cheatham, who is. Uh, Michael Shannon's agent, who comes to be a pretty prominent um, role in the film. I can't say much without ruining it. Okay, so we won't it, we won't have you do that. Then. I guess I don't want I don't want to spoil anything, but but you know, Cheatham plays an integral role to the film, and uh, and it's a fun it's a fun part again to be able to work on and you know to work opposite not just Michael but um, Kate Hudson and Zach Braff and Don Johnson. Mm -hmm. At one point I'm like in the scene with everybody and I'm just like. <laughs> pinch me, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> pinch me moment. <laughs> yeah, pinch me moment for sure. <laughs> that I'm here. Well, it's so great. I, I um, do you have anything else? You're, um, we only have like a quick two, two seconds or so, but are you working on something else right now? Um, I'm, I'm, no, I mean, right now I'm, I'm, I'm auditioning. I'm getting back out there. COVID is kind of coming back, you know, and, and getting out of here and we're, the business is sort of coming back. And so um, I'm, I'm sort of basking in this moment for the time being. Good. Well, you should be because you, it, you've got three really, well, certainly Lasky, Lansky is uh, a very good film and I'm looking forward to seeing Swing and Shriver too and watching your career. So I hope you come back on the show oh, at another you. time. I hope you'll have me. Definitely. I definitely will. Well, everyone, look for David Cade. He's the up and coming actor who's in Lansky, Shriver and Swing. And I, I'm, I'm going to say this first. I think you are the next Brad Pitt, David. So <laughs> there you go. You got me all a flutter. That's so sweet of you. Thank you. 
and I interviewed Brad Pitt. So anyhow, really? yeah, yeah, just on the red carpet. But anyhow, so what, yeah. What, what, well, he was a, certainly an inspiration. I love what he's done with Plan B too. He's an inspiration. That yes, guy. yes, he is definitely an inspiration. So thank you again, and I wish you much success in your career. Thank you so much, love. I appreciate you having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. If you have missed any of the Jam Price shows all about movies, they are all archived on thejampriceshow.com. They're also on the iHeart Podcast Network, Apple Play, Google Play, iTunes, YouTube, you name it, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, we are there. Uh, and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Jam Price Show. Thank you for listening.